Celebrating 25 years of impactful journalism, this is John News Dex. And coming up in the next 16 minutes, free three months water supply for the entire country to cost government over 200 million Ghana cities. Government will be spending a hoping figure, it could be more, um, of uh, two, over 200 uh, million. Than Mineral call centers have been established by the Water and Sanitation Ministry to help with water distribution in the next three months. We'll bring you details. Also, some COVID-19 patients and their families facing stigmatization from neighbors and public uh, due to their situation. Ever. No one comes to our shop to come and buy anything. As a result of that, my father um, asked my grandmother to, uh, to close the shop. We'll speak to an expert on how to resolve this issue. We'll go to Parliament uh, where they are reconvening today after the majority and minority MPs remain divided over what today's recall is, whether today's recall is necessary. We have already been sacrificing. Remember, we sat on Saturday. Ordinarily, we don't sit on uh, uh, Saturdays. Uh, Mondays. So we've already made a lot of sacrifices. It is in order. We have to go and support the times we are in. It's not normal times for us. Now in business, local manufacturers receive more support to produce personal protective equipment during the period of the coronavirus pandemic. Please stay with me for details. Hello again, my name is Ernest Mini. Many thanks for joining us here on Newsdex. Now, the Minister for Water, Resource and Sanitation says three months free water of uh, free water to be supplied across the country will cost an estimated 200 million Ghana cities. The sector minister Cecilia Abnadapa spoke a while ago on the Super Morning Show on Joy FM. The numbers have been submitted to uh, the finance uh, minister, but approximately, government will be spending a hoping figure. It could be more uh, of uh, two, over 200 uh, million Ghana cities. 200 million Ghana cities. Yes. How is this 200 million Ghana cities, which is adding to previous debt, going to be funded? Like I said, I didn't want to talk about it because the finance minister is now going through the figures. So, but because um, we haven't cleared that yet, uh, at the appropriate time, we can send you the information. So, will, will this be a part of the relief package? You know, it the is. it is okay. clearly it is a relief to Ghanaians. Okay, and so this is going to come out of the costs that government is bearing because of COVID-19. I should think so. And it's not going to be from your budget line as a ministry? No, no, no. Nobody anticipated in this world that uh, this day, 8th April 2020, we'll all be uh, <laughs> battling with this uh, particular unwanted visitor. Now, the sector minister, Cecilia Abna Dapa, also revealed that call centers have been established to receive information on the distribution. We have also put out numbers for people to call uh, uh, the call center of Ghana Water Company. So if you will permit me, I'll read them out. They send them around the press houses I've asked them to publish them in the newspapers so I can read some of them out. Yes. For Ghana Water, the call center numbers are 0555123393. Again, 0555123393. The second number is 0555. One five 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 two four. 
again, 055-5155524. The third number is 020-7385087. I repeat, 020-7385087. The second number for the 020 series is 020-7385-088. Then we have the same number repeated, ending with 89 and 90. So I hope um, customers will take these down. We will also keep on bringing them out from time to time to make sure we all have these numbers. And... Uh, like we said, we, we are also appealing to all of us not to tamper with the pipelines and infrastructure of Ghana Water Company Limited. Now, lead of Ghana's coronavirus test team, Dr. Samuel Kaba Akoria, says Ghana's COVID-19 cases will not hit the thousands as seems elsewhere in the U.S. and Europe. In an exclusive interview with John News, he said the two-week lockdown ordered by President Ekufado has proved timely and produced significant results, which has helped the team stem the spread of the virus in Ghana. He has been speaking with my colleague Latifi Dries, who was given rare access to the Ghana East District Hospital, the main center for holding and treating coronavirus patients in the country. Talk of frontline health workers delivering health care to Ghana's COVID-19 patients, and you'll find them right here at the Ghana East District Hospital. Here is the center. This is where most of Ghana's COVID-19 patients are being held. The tape you find behind me separates proper frontline health workers and their clients from auxiliary or secondary frontline workers like myself. In here, the nurses and doctors are racing against time to save the many lives that are in the building behind me, currently battling with the deadly COVID-19. On the corridors of the health facility, Joy News camera captured some of the patients receiving treatment, pacing up and down. Leader of Ghana's coronavirus test team, Dr. Kaba says, most of the patients are responding positively to treatment and expresses confidence the country will not get to the levels of the U.S. and Europe. With this approach, uh, appropriate actions mm. taken, is to contain this. So if you even see of late, our numbers have not been increasing. We're in uh, 204, we moved to 214, and we are still 214. Two. It will go a little high, but we don't expect it to go much than uh, the it, system can contain. Is that a hope you are expressing, or yeah, is it, what you is know, going to happen? It, you see, this is what will happen, mm. right? When you lock down and you start testing, the more people you test, you might get more positives, right? So I will not be surprised to have more cases positive because that is the purpose of locking down, to identify them early. And, 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 and then you prepare yourself for that. But it also gives us that window of breath that the next two weeks we should be having less because we had locked those at home. So. It's not only a hope, and of course hope is the last thing you lose, I do have that hope, but it's also reality okay. that measures of containment has been taken at the appropriate time for us not to go to the thousands. So Dr. Kaba is confident Ghana will not hit the thousands when it comes to patients. When do you if, we if we continue the way we go and mm. the way we are doing things. Mm. When, when should you expect the, the, I mean, the curve to flatten? Okay. How soon should or would Ghana scare the flat? Okay, I'll, I'll help you with that in a way so that you understand. In every country, whatever it is, you always get a peak and then it starts to drop. Health workers undergoing training here uh, to be put on the front line of the COVID-19 fight say they are unfazed with the dangers associated with the deadly virus. Why others will call it a risk, I would want to call it a privilege. 
all over the world, other staffs, I've seen other nurses who are also uh, sacrificing to help our colleagues who are uh, having this uh, ailment or this uh, suffering from this uh, pandemic. Because it's something like uh, a worldwide something uh, spread, definitely there will be a little no or little fear inside. But definitely, no matter who you are, that's. There's, there's a fear that you can encounter. There's some, some little fear that will come your way. But as a health worker, you should rather take away the fear and know that you are in for this and it's a passion. But as he said, the battle is a lot. And then as a health worker, you should be ready for anything because it could be your family, it could be your partner. Anybody can be there. So, so supposing I was the one there, I will need somebody to care for me. So I think that we should, we are just doing it with a free will, not thinking about anything. Now some relatives or people currently receiving treatments for COVID-19 have told John News about the ostracization they have been enduring in recent weeks. According to them, the duration from especially people they regard as friends and even family has become unbearable. John News' Justice Beidou in this report tells the story of how coronavirus has transformed friends into foes. They started telling the people who ride the motorbikes to go and spread the news. This child has asked me to hide his identity. He says he's been through hell, and even though he looks scared, he wants the world to know his story. Hopefully, that changes something. You don't know that you have gotten some, so you will not be talking about people soon. I'll call him Oko. Oko's father is one of the people who are currently receiving treatment for coronavirus. Since his father was taken to hospital, he himself and others in his home have tested negative. But that has not spared him scorn from people who used to be friendly neighbors. Now ever, no one comes to our shop to come and buy anything. As a result of that, my father um, asked my grandmother to, uh, to close the shop. If people see that one of these of the people in this house has gone out, they'll even run away or sometimes they'll be watching you. Or sometimes they'll be mocking you. These two sisters have also invited me into their home to tell me their story. They too have a brother receiving treatment for COVID-19. The attacks they faced has forced them to shut their food vending business. They've asked the four workers they work with to go home and they've also stopped going to the market because since the rumor went out, everyone who meets them runs away. The way they are treating us, it's as if we are the ones with the disease. You need to be tough to go through this. The whole town has been told not to come close to us. They do not even buy from us again. I've lost most of my friends because of this problem. And I don't know what is coming ahead. Whether if school will open our work or not, I don't know. From far away, somewhere in Europe, this woman too reached out with a familiar story. Someone has been around the community and the neighboring community to tell them that we've all contracted the virus. So Her family back in Ghana has been through the same trauma and even outside the borders of Ghana, she feels the heat too. Over Skype, she had a message. I would plead with our government that she also focus informing the general public about stigma because the disease or the virus might not kill the person, but the stigma might. This week will be a critical one in Ghana's fight against coronavirus, according to the government. But it seems there's a disease that is even more critical that the country is yet to pay attention to. Stigma. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Accra. 
Such a sad story there, but I've been joined on the phone lines by Dr. Yafia Kenton Brenya, who is the senior lecturer and, uh, and the so social psychologist at the Department of Psychology at the University of Ghana on the issue of stigmatization and related issues. Doc, thank you very much for your time here on Newsdex. You've written extensively on behavioral and attitudinal issues that uh, COVID-19 presents to us. You touch on the issue of stigma and how it leads to psychological challenges uh, plus its negative effect on the fight against the disease. Uh, tell us more on that. Thank you, Ernest, for having me. Uh, in general, stigma is usually a negative perception and connotation to a situation or a person based on the perceived deviation from the norm or out of the ordinary. So if you look at the cases that you just listed. And in this particular case, COVID-19. It's a disease that almost everybody is afraid of. And therefore, when unfortunately you are infected, people tend to equate you with the disease. And therefore, whatever fear, anxiety, that is associated with the disease, they tend to transfer it to you. Hmm. Not only that, when you are stigmatized, people tend to shine you, not only today, but if you are not lucky, for a long time to come. Hmm. So that's my introductory remark. And, and that has played out in the story that we had my colleague uh, Justice Beidou tell us a while ago. But how exactly does this affect the fight against the spread of COVID-19? It might affect it in a number of ways. One, if I know that I'll be stigmatized, I'll be rejected, people will be pointing figures at me, which in the long run will affect my self-esteem. Then if there's a way I can hide without letting people know that I have the symptoms, I'll do that. Mm. So when that happens, it means I can infect so many people without seeking help. However, in this case, because of the what we've been told that coughing is involved and also difficult in breathing, we may, most people will be compelled to come out. However, if they don't come out early and they get to the final stage, by that time they would have infected a number of people. So the first challenge is people not reporting. Mm. The second one is people, when they get to know, instead of they helping you, calling the number for you, taking you to the relevant place, they will move away from you. And that can exacerbate your case. In essence, the information they've given us aimed at helping us to protect ourselves and not to spread may be negated. Very interesting points you make there. I'm looking at your article and you say there's an urgent need for us uh, for the ongoing communication to address the issue of uh, stigma. How should this issue be practically addressed, especially with communication? What can government do? Okay, one angle of stigma is that sometimes people think that you have brought it on yourself mm -hmm. based on certain unacceptable or deviant behavior you have engaged. Fortunately for us, in this context, it is not like... Uh, HIV AIDS, and even that is not only people we perceive to be uh, just running around in quotes, because there are other factors. So coming back to this, fortunately, as I said, it is not a disease or illness that you bring it to yourself because you have engaged in certain behavior that is society perceives as negative, is illegal, unacceptable. So that is the first point for the communicators to hold on, that it is not the fault of someone, what sometimes we refer to in psychology as a just world hypothesis. People think that people get uh, what happened to them, they deserve it. But this is not that point. So we need to hit that strongly. That is an illness or a virus that no one has control over. So accidentally, you can have it through no fault of yours. That is one. Then two to also hit the point that every other person it has risk. 
So why are you pointing your finger at someone, taunting that person, running away from that person? What if you get it? Will you be happy if people do that to you? Then the third point will be that we now know what we can do to at least stay away. And that's the more reason why we should go by what the ministry have told us. Regular washing of hands with soap, uh, running water, use of sanitizers, social distance. In other words, don't get to where they are grouped, they are crowded and all that. And even if it becomes very necessary to be there, make sure you keep the physical distance away from the people around you. Doc, as we wrap up on this, uh, what are some of the other behavioral and attitudinal changes that uh, this disease and these times will bring to us that we should be wary of? One is the issue of hand washing, which is one of the key things that will prevent all of that. Mm. It's not everybody who on a regular basis washes his or her hand. Some people, even before they eat Jesus, uh, dip their finger or their hand in the water. Yeah. It's afterwards that they do. So those who have not formed that habit, they need to step out their action. Other people around them should ensure or just encourage them to do it because one of the surest ways. The other attitude we need to work with, now that we are in a lockdown and most companies are also working from homes and all that, we need, we're going to have more time on our hands, which is likely to lead to boredom. So we need to engage in a lot of things that will help us to, for instance, all of us have things that we would have wanted to do, but because of lack of time, this is an opportunity for us to do, to read more books, get more vocabulary, read the Bible, read the Quran, learn how to cook a meal, play games with family, bond with the children, and several other things we can think of. Indeed, looking at the brighter side of this challenge, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Yakya Kinton. He is a senior lecturer and a social psychologist at the University of Ghana. Now, hand washing is one of the cheapest, most effective things you can do to protect yourself against coronavirus as well as many other infectious diseases. Yet, for people of uh, Kisumasu, a community under the Techiman South Municipality of the Bono East region, even this most basic of steps is simply out of reach. Now, that's because the community lacks potable source of water. Anna Sabit was in the community and filed the following report. People of Akisimasi, a community under the Techiman South Municipality of the Bono East region, having access to portable source of drinking water is their biggest challenge. This borehole here is the only source of drinking water. One has to spend between an hour to two hours to get a pan full of water. And so, in this era where health experts are advising that we wash our hands regularly with soap and the running water, how are the people here observing this simple health directive, speaking with the people to find out more about how they are coping with the situation? Assembly member for the area, Mr. Julius Sike, has been speaking to us on what could happen should there be an outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic here. So the community to the population is too high. For us, we, we just join a queue. Now they are saying we're sitting together more than uh, 25. But we can gather here more than 25 because water is a life. So we, we are all fighting for. So we are facing that challenge. With hand washing being one of the surest ways one could stay away from the coronavirus, how are the people here observing this directive? They say we should wash our hands regularly. But now we are facing water problem. So it's a challenge to us. For us to get some more to drink, we say we should wash our hands. We are praying 
government should come and help us for us to get enough water to drink. If not, we are suffering here. We can't follow all the process. Julius Deacon tells me that the community will be at a higher risk in case there is an outbreak. If in case we are praying, God shouldn't bring coronavirus here. But when we get coronavirus here, it's probability that it will spread faster. The people here, however, have an appeal to authorities. They say they need an alternative source of drinking water coupled with hand washing kits. We need some hand washing kits here, so we wash our hands before fetching. How do we do this without the kits? So we call on government to support us. If government comes to our aid, we will be able to observe the direct From Akismasu here in the Tichiman South Municipality of the Bono East Region, I am Anna Sabit for Joy News. Let's go to Parliament now. Majority and minority MPs are divided over whether today's recall of Parliament is necessary. Speaker Michael Quay issued a notice asking MPs to return today. Two working days after he suspended sitting indefinitely for MPs to go on a break, Finance Minister Kendall Freyata is expected in the House to seek approval for COVID-19 related expenditures. MP for Bulsa North, James Ogaga, says government should have planned and dealt with these issues when the House was sitting last week. The decision to recall is unfortunate. You recall that on the day we rose, the minority leader made it very clear that it was wrong for the Speaker to suspend the House. He should have adjourned proceedings sine day so that in accordance with the standing orders, if we have to be recalled, we're given two weeks notice to prepare. Remember that our constituencies are very remote from the capital, Accra. And so if you have to travel all the way to your constituency only to be recalled within the matter of two days, I mean, it is most unfortunate and regrettable. You don't do that. Because by recalling within two days, you disorganize the member of parliament. Remember that part of our responsibilities and duties is owed to our constituents, which is why parliament's calendar allows us to go on recess, so that you can interact and interface with your constituents. Return to the house armed with what is happening in your constituency. You are able to contribute more effectively to the debate in the house. So if you have to be recalled within the matter of two days, what is the urgent nature of business? I am sure it all has to do with the stabilization fund. If that is true, the question to ask is, why did the finance minister not bring up the necessary amendments for us to effect before we rule? What held him back? That is, we have already been sacrificing. Remember, we sat on Saturday. Ordinarily, we don't sit on uh, Saturdays and uh, Mondays. So we've already made a lot of sacrifices, but part of the sacrifice also uh, uh, includes us going to our various constituencies to help in the sensitization of our constituents about the, the, how to contain the, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Now, in prior to MP, Seth Echampo insists recalling the House is in the national interest. Recall is in order. We are not in normal times. Um, ideally, when we were rising, in fact, we could not write Sinidai. We couldn't adjourn Sinidai because we are not in normal times. So his, the right honorable speaker suspended the house Sinidai indefinitely. And before we rose, we approved of the capping on the stabilization and heritage funds. And I should have been going to my constituency by now. But because we are not in normal times, I'm here in Kumasi, you know, observing how the deployment on the imposition of restrictions is happening. And so when I heard the news that the speaker has recalled us, he, call, he called us and he made that call to us in Accra before we rose on Saturday evening. And we need to allow the finance committee, this is, an, this is a constitutional requirement, to authorize the usage of the withdrawals of the drawdown from the Stabilization and Heritage Fund, which has been duly, for my information, 
been affected by the finance minister into the contingency fund and by the constitution article the sole body that can authorize the usage of the fund is the finance committee of the republic of ghana's legislature hence it is in order we have to go and support the times we are in it's not normal times for us Let's go live to Parliament now for an update uh, on the floor, what is happening in the House. Uh, my colleague, parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opokugato joins us. Uh, Joseph, what can you report? Hello, Joseph. If you can hear me, uh, what can you report? Has business of the house started already? Uh, business of the house has not started yet, Ernest. Um, in fact, in the chamber, I could count well less than 10 MPs um, right within the precinct at the moment. It was expected that a sitting should have begun at 10 o'clock, which was actually the time that the speaker gave, uh, but most of the time sitting never ends up starting around then. But um, we are waiting for sitting to begin any moment from now. A number of things are on the agenda as we gather. Uh, first of all, we are expecting that the finance minister will be updating MPs broadly when it comes to the various measures that the uh, government is taking in order to raise resources to deal with the COVID-19 issue. And then particularly, uh, there was a development on Saturday regarding the use of oil money, specifically the stabilization fund, about $200 million of that has been moved from the stabilization fund into what is called the contingency fund. Now, when that is done, the finance minister is supposed to return to parliament with an outline on what he wants to use that oil money, which is supposed to be a reserve in order for uh, use in difficult times for the economy. So parliament would have to approve that before then the house can go ahead and spend. So we gather that is what a lot of the focus will be on today, even as the House sits. But apart from that, you're also expecting that the appointment of Dr. Okoboy as Deputy Health Minister uh, will be communicated formally to Parliament today and referred to the Appointment Committee. They may well work on it. They may or may not work on it between today and tomorrow and get the necessary approval done. And also, we gather that the issue having to do with tax waivers for healthcare personnel, the uh, request for that will be brought to Parliament today by the finance minister because you know that uh, per the laws of the country apart from parliament no other institution can give tax waivers and again it's expected that today uh, latest by tomorrow the finance committee would have worked on that and brought its report for the house to give the necessary approval in order to allow for that but um, it's expected to be quite a heated conversation to a certain extent because you recall the minority is particularly unhappy about this recall and the indication they give is that uh, they think this is an effort in order to get the legislation that would allow for the uh, establishment of a voters register the legal requirement to actually mature which is why and so they've sent out a warning that any business that has nothing to do with COVID-19 that's thrown in there in the course of the conversation is something that they, the minority would work out on so we're waiting to see how things will transpire in the course of the day NS. and uh, on the issue of the stabilization fund 200 million of it which has been transferred Gato do you have indication on what exactly government intends to use that money for? Uh, when the finance minister briefed MPs about uh, two weeks ago, uh, he indicated that this is money that's going into um, the stimulus package that government intends rolling out for business people. And, uh, you know, he put that figure at a billion Ghana cities in terms of how much is going into um, the, the set stimulus package. And $200 million translates into just a little over um, a billion cities. We gather that that is exactly what it is going into. Uh, there are a lot of questions about who will end up benefiting from this stimulus package, which hasn't been answered, what the modalities will be if someone wants to access it, whether it's going to big businesses or small businesses and how much of it is going to big businesses and how much of it is going into small businesses. Uh, those are the details that the finance minister will be laying out, even for the House to give the necessary approval for. But uh, that's what the $200 million will be used for a stimulus package to support businesses and individuals uh, who are being negatively affected by the coronavirus and the uh, lockdown uh, as has been ongoing for well over 10 days now. 
On the issue of the minority's concern with the relevance of today's uh, recall uh, and the suspicion around the ally for the voters' register, how close are we to maturity as far as that ally is concerned? Um, this is something that it would require up to 21 sitting days as far as Parliament is concerned. Now, it was first laid about a month ago, but you know the committee that looks at it, which is the Subsidiary Legislation Committee, is actually chaired by a minority MP, and that's been the practice that there are two committees that are chaired by minority MPs, the Subsidiary Legislation Committee as well as the Public Accounts Committee. And so on two different occasions when that ally was brought to Parliament, Parliament. The Dominic Ayene led committee said that there were faults with it and demanded that it be withdrawn. So it was withdrawn the first time, withdrawn the second time. And with the latest laying, um, it's only counted um, just about seven certain days since the latest laying was done. And so it has a very long way to go in terms of uh, more than. Um, uh, 16 additional days that the House has to sit in order to allow for that particular document to mature, which is what raises questions about whether um, the majority would really be able to get those days in addition. And so if two more days are on today, then it's left with, well, about 14 more days that the House needs to sit in order for that particular document to mature here in Parliament. So uh, we wait to see what exactly the plan will be. Per the original plan, Parliament is supposed to return from its break sometime around the 28th of May. And with the latest development as to whether it will be pushed back or they will stick to that, we don't know. But it uh, looks like that particular document is a long way away from maturity. And without that being done, um, the Electoral Commission, per the amendments that they are seeking to the legislation that allows for the holding of elections, uh, they would want to introduce the national identification card as one of the documents that you can go ahead and register uh, for the app for the new voters register with. And the Joseph, thank you very much for the update there from Parliament. That's our parliamentary correspondent, Joseph Opoku Gato. We return to the House as and when uh, we have updates, when sitting actually begin. Now, let's take a look at the COVID-19 headlines across the world. The U.S. recorded the most coronavirus deaths in a single day, with more than 1,800 fatalities reported on Tuesday. It brings the total number of deaths in the country to nearly 13,000, according to data from John Hopkins University, and the U.S. has more than 398 confirmed cases, the highest number in the world. Global cases have exceeded 1.4 million. However, during a press conference, President Donald Trump said the U.S. might be getting to top of the curve. We know the Chinese city of Wuhan, where the coronavirus pandemic originated, has ended its 11-week lockdown as infections and deaths have tailed off. As they emerge from their long lockdown, residents share the lessons they've learned uh, from the outbreak and offer encouraging words to the rest of the world. Chi 与其用牺牲来叙述这次封城和隔离一屋子的减轻
。有一次我们团购到了面粉和五花肉，准备做一顿饺子。这是我这么多年来第二次吃到我爸包的饺子，上一次就第一次还是在我幼儿园的时候。期间有一个情人节，然后有我的生日，我的男朋友。是吧？费了，费了，费了老大的劲，去给我买。主要是我想出门逛一逛，买顺便给你买个蛋糕、哦。好的，好的，给我买蛋糕，还买花，还去，呃，大早上排队排队给我买买那个牛排，回来见。情人节的时候。我家是穆斯林，因为疫情的关系，很难买到清真的食品。然后我们在市医协会买到了一箱清真水饺，当天那位穆斯林朋友就送过来，那一箱水饺特别特别重，我特别特别感动。多打电话去询问他们的状况，尤其如果你的家人不在疫情正中心的话，他们很担心你，所以让他们及时了解你的情况。伴侣的话，其实就就是多沟通了，因为很少有机会有这种几个月时间二十四小时都在一起。对，其实是会暴露对方生活中很多缺点，有了问题呢，也不要冷战，也不要吵。如果你在家里工作，还在家里工作，你一定要把工作跟生活区分开，不然会把你搞得很崩溃。平常没有时间做的事情。赶紧去做，该看书看书，该刷剧刷剧，该打游戏打游戏，该陪家人陪家人。现在给我的感觉就跟一月底二月初的武汉是一模一样，我能体会到他们民众的现在这种这种这种绝望。如果你感到焦虑、沮丧、愤怒、难过的话，那都是正常的。封城不是为了剥夺你的自由，而是为了用符合科学规律的办法去对付传染病，让你尽早重获自由。我希望武汉作为你们的前车之鉴，你们能真正的能够从中学到一些，然后自己少牺牲一点，少走一些弯路。只有全球的疫情都好起来，我们大家才能真的好起来。That's a lot of hope there. You're watching News Next with me and that's me. We're taking a break. When we return, we'll bring you business where local manufacturers receive more support to produce personal protective equipment during the period of the coronavirus pandemic. Daryl Kwal has details after the break. Hi, good morning everyone. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Local manufacturers of personal protective equipment are expected to benefit from funding to enhance their capacity in meeting the demand of both government and the private sector. The funding is not only expected to help in the fight against coronavirus, but support the growth of local industries. Ebenezer Sabote has more in this report. Those Akufuado met with the local pharmaceutical firms to assure them of government support in meeting the demand for medical supplies. This follows a series of meetings with the captains of industry to find the funding sources for production. But after receiving some cash donations from the Ghana Association of Bankers in Accra, Director at the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, Professor Abraham Kwabna Anang, disclosed that even though many of their procurements are done locally, the institute was willing to scale up local purchases in the wake of the pandemic. Mm -hmm nation of the world one of the most important keys to sustainability is your ability to to build local capacity to deliver and uh, fortunately in Ghana we have seen so many uh, companies coming up some people have even started even preparing uh, face masks made at home face masks and we have some local companies producing face masks which of course we procure those kind of materials to enhance our ability to 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 deliver on the covid 19 testing and control also even the hand sanitizers and things like that so really that is a positive thing that uh, the government had done and uh, not too long ago bringing the pharmaceuticals for example together to take concrete action and we procure from such sources to also ensure that we put a, a oil into the engine of growth from locally, and it's very important. Meanwhile, the chief executive of Ecobank Ghana, Dan Saki, disclosed that bankers are considering procuring ventilators for the state to aid the fight to save lives. The issue of ventilators is one of uh, supply. At this point in time, it's um, 
there's a shortage of ventilators, so we are focusing on the essentials now, what is available. And that's why we focus on the test kits. That's why we focus on helping the doctors. That's why we focus on feeding the homeless. The next stage is once the supply situation in the world normalizes, I think we all look at how we can help as an association and also in our individual capacities as banks to support and uh, improve the stock of ventilators we have in the country. The Association of Doctors and Residency also used the opportunity to seek for more support for the private sector with the announcement of a mobile short code to be used to donate. And Ghana's fisheries sector can't be left out when it comes to the impact of coronavirus. Fisher folk are calling for some protection against the virus as they go about their activities. To this end, major distributors of fishing nets in Ghana, CCT Group Limited, have donated 50,000 cities to the COVID fund as well as 100 Veronica buckets. There's more in this report. The impact of the coronavirus on businesses world over is dire, with effects leading to massive layoffs and closure of companies. In these uncertain times, businesses are turning their attention from profits to social development and mobilization of funds and all available resources to fight the virus. Because of this, major distributors of fishing gears in Ghana, CCT Group Limited, have donated 50,000 CDs to the COVID Trust and also 10,000 CDs worth of Veronica Bucket and bowls for the fishing community. Here's Director of Operations, Nana Ajinim Boateng. With the lockdown, we are getting a lot of calls from the fisher folks asking for materials. How can they get supplies to enable them patronize or be effective in their work? These are some of the challenges we are facing, you know, and due to uh, the lockdown also, we are getting calls from other members of the chamber with regards to how it is creating a lot of difficulty for their business. And uh, I believe that these are not normal times, as has been repeated by the president. Receiving the items, Information Minister Kocho Pon Nkrumah commended the efforts of the company. Meanwhile, MD of CCT Group Limited, Nana Yabwaten, has called on other corporate bodies to step up contributions to the fight against the virus. We are very much interested in humanity. That's the welfare of humanity. So far, Ghana's business community has heeded to the call to support the fight against COVID-19, with the Association of Ghana Bankers allocating 10 million cities to aid the fight. And that's it for Business. The news continues after this break. Celebrating 25 years of media excellence. And indeed, these are difficult times, but God is on our side. Let's adhere to the precautionary measures and would be very fine. Trust me on that one. Welcome to Joy News Interactive with me, Naajele Doku. This show is live on your digital TV, DSTV Channel 421 and Go TV Channel 144. Welcome. Join the conversation on WhatsApp 1050 And now... What Ghana Water Company Limited and the Electricity Company of Ghana have been directed to ensure the stable supply of water and electricity during this period. In addition, there will be no disconnection of supply. Furthermore, government will absorb the water bills for all Ghanaians for the next three months, i.e. April, May, and June. All water tankers publicly and privately owned, are also going to be mobilized to ensure the supply of water to all vulnerable communities. And that was President Ikufuado asking utility providers to ensure constant water supply and electricity during the COVID-19 period. It's been three days since that announcement was made. We have been asking you on our Facebook page, is your tap running or is, yeah, is water with water? Or are your lights on? And there are some comments on Facebook I want to read. For me, my lights are still on. They've been off and on. But yes, some my taps are still flowing. Call me on 0302-211-691 or 0302-211-692. Let's talk. Let me find out. Are your taps running? Is your light on or not? Now, let's read some of your comments right now on Facebook. And Echo Smith says... 
where I've been fetching water, the tap owner is not ready to make it free. Mm. Wow. Abdul says, we still got light off every day in Tamale South. Are we not part of Ghana? Talk only. We don't see the impact. Emmanuel says, my tap is flowing like river now. Four more to do more. That's, for, that's what he's saying. That's coming from Emmanuel Nyan. And those are your comments coming on Facebook. I join you on TV. You can also go there and let me know what's happening in your neighborhood. Call me on 0302-211-691 or 0302-211-692. And Senior Adakwa says, every, yes, every second, every minute, every hour. Mami Akusia said, tap not flowing properly in Takoradi. Wow. So Nipa says, Chia is they going to drink on for last year, for, from last year, once a month. Ajin Sem, that's what he's saying. Mauro says, tap is not flowing here in community 25. Kobna Mensa says, our tap is not flowing in second day. And King says, Gone water Waterworks supplies acquire with portable water. The pipeline passes through Lower Manya Korobo and Yilo Korobo, but the tap is not flowing in So Manya. Wow. And I have Emmanuel from a fan call on the line. Hello, Emmanuel. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, Auntie. <laughs> How is yeah. everything going this morning? Are you doing the right things, washing your hands and stuff like that? Please, you said. Are you taking the precautionary measures? Are you keeping yourself safe? Yeah, I'm keeping myself safe. Beautiful. Now I want to find out, are your, are your lights on? Uh, we are having a problem with the water. Your water? Yeah. They, they said it's not flowing and they have locked it up. Oh, wow. So how do you get water? Yeah, um, we don't get some at our place. Are you using tankers? Are tankers supplying you with water? Are you still no, buying? No, there's no tanker over here. Unless a boho and that one too, she's selling it. Wow, for how much? A uh, bucket is 30 pesos. Ooh, wow. But do you have lights as well? Oh, yeah, we have lights. And how is that one? Is it consistent or there are some light outages and stuff? Uh, please, I can't hear that one. Is the light, um, are the lights on for consistent number of, t for like the whole oh, period? Oh, yeah, yeah, it has, been on for, it has been on since Sunday, it is still on. Okay, that's beautiful. Thank you so much, Imano. You can call me on 0302. 211-691 or 0302 -211 And I have Harry on the line from Bowie. Hello, Harry. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. How are you? I want, yeah, I want to make... Uh, my name is Henry. Uh, Henry. North, Bowie. North yeah. Bowie, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you too? I'm doing fantastic. Um, Henry, I want to find out, um, are your taps flowing? My tap is not flowing. In fact, my, my tap has not been flowing for a year. And it's still, it's not flowing. Wow. So how yeah. do you get water at home? Yeah, we buy from the tankers. And the, the 800 Ghana cities. Whoa. For a trip? No, not for free. We pay for it. For a it. trip? 100 Ghana cities for a trip? For a trip, yeah, exactly. Okay, wow. And how much, is, how does that take you? For a month or two or just a month? Oh, the, the two times in a month. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and, then, and, and then we, we don't know what, uh, what the, uh, the water company is doing. And, 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 and so I, I thought they can see the reason and so that they can try to reconnect the water back. Definitely. Because we need water for, for a lot of hygienic purposes. Definitely. And things are not going well. So, so that's my concern. Okay, Please. sure. Thank you so much, Henry from Bawe. Um, Isaac in Takwa is on the line. Hello, Isaac. Hello. Hi. Good morning, Isaac. How are you? Morning. Now, uh, I'm doing fantastic. Isaac, can you tell me what's happening in Takwa? Do you have consistent electricity supply? The light is gone off twice this morning. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the water, um, it's not, it's not, it doesn't flow regular. It doesn't flow regular. The water is flow regular. So do you have to buy from tankers or you, you're getting it from a borehole? We have worth around. Okay, okay. We have worked around mm. the rest of the world. Mm, mm. Thank you so much, Isaac from Takwa. I have Kwame from Sunyane on the line. Hello, Kwame. Good morning. Yeah, hello. Good morning. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. We thank God for that. Kwame, tell me what's happening in Sunyane. Tell me, do you have water? Hello? Oh, yes. Okay. Water is flowing. But no, please. But in general, I think uh, about 80%. Okay. Mm, mm. And how is, the, how is the power supply? Oh, 
Uh, it's also good but that time is intermittent. Intermittent, okay. But everything but, on, but comes back. Oh, okay, sure. Right. Okay. Thank you so much, Kwame from Sunyani. I have someone Mad from Medina on the line. Hello, Samuel. Yeah. Good, good morning. morning. How are you? I'm doing good, please. Now, Samuel, tell me what's happening in Medina. How is the water supply? Um, water supply in Medina has been a problem. We we, we pay for every water that we fetch, and life has been consistent too. Hmm. Okay. Now, with the consistency of the light, that do you get power out? Because I live a little closer to Medina, so I know how that can be when there's a rainstorm, it goes off yeah, and stuff. Yeah, sometimes now we've had consistent uh, power supply. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, sure. Thank you so much, Sam. Well, I have Alex from Bubuashi on the line. Hello, Alex. Good morning. Good morning, madam. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Now, tell me what's happening, Bubuashi. Do you have constant water supply? Yes, we have, but sometimes the water comes is dirty. And also, I wanted to find out, this water, free water, is it for the whole nation or is it for the lockdown area? It's for the whole nation, and that's happening for three months. From April, uh, May, and June, it's going to be absorbed by the government. But, um, Alex, if you owe the water company, you're not going to benefit from this. Is there anything you want to find out? But let me ask about your what your electricity supply. How is that? It's, it's coming. Is it good? There's water. Yeah, there's water, but they, they sometimes come with it. The water is not correct. What about electricity? Uh, we have electricity. Good, good. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. And I have Holasi, Holali from Tema. Good morning, Holali. How are you? I'm fine, you yourself. I'm doing fantastic, by grace. And um, can you tell me, what's happening in Tema? Which side of Tema do you live in, actually? I'm at 24. Community 24. So tell me, is there water supply? Because I read a message from Community 25 that said there's no water. Uh, yes, there is, but it's not consistent. Not consistent. So how many days in the week do you have water? Um, at least twice. Twice? Wow. OK. Now, what about electricity? That, that, that has been consistent. That has been consistent. Thank you so much, Olali from Tema. And you can call me on 0302. 211-691 or 0302 -211 Let me know what's happening in your neighborhood. Do you have constant water supply? If not, are you buying from tankers or is your landlord or your landlady still selling water to you? We want to know what's happening in town. Or tell me about electricity. Some, I'm getting reports that some people don't have light as of this morning. And I'm Rahim from Wa. Good morning, Rahim. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Now, Rahim, tell me what's happening. Which side of why you? Which part of why are you in? Wa Central. Wa Central. So, Wa Central is that constant electricity supply? Very poor. Ooh. And how has that been like? Do you have it four days straight, or a day and then the rest of the hour, like you know, 24 hours? You don't have it on. Can you tell me that? The day before yesterday, there was a rain, and because of the rain, we have poor light supply because of we saw the lighting system is very poor mm. and for instance this our area we we have a, a low current for two days now wow wow rahim wow so what about water as well water too is not consistent so in a week how many days do you have water supply in your taps three days three days wow yes wow and does this make it difficult for you to be able to keep, you know, things going with personal hygiene in this COVID-19 times? Yes, it's very, it's, it's very, very difficult. Definitely. Okay, sure. Thank you so much, Rahim from Moi. And that was our last caller. Who read some more messages from our Facebook page? And that was Rahim from Moi telling us the update there. And now let's read some of your more, more of your comments on Facebook, whether your taps are running or you have constant electricity supply. And this is from Laie Now Kaiko. She says, today no water and lights are out too. And um, this is from Yao. He says, my car goes out for three hours every day. Wow. Suleimana says, for the past two months, our... Pipeline is dried. We resort to water tankers. 
um, Sasina Dok who says, is light included? Oh, then that's why my light isn't going off. No, China now we are premanampa. Okay, Rita Sa says, tap not flowing in Elmina. Nana Amponsa says, tap is flowing. Okay, those are comments coming on our Facebook page. We're asking, are your taps flowing with water? And do you have constant electricity supply? So away from electricity and water, you know, our utilities. Some Ghanaians have given true meaning to the statement, necessity is the mother of inventions. A number of homemade inventions have come to the fore following the COVID-19 pandemic. One of these inventions caught the president, Anado Dr. Kufado's attention, and he recommended him during his, late, uh, his last address. Let's recap what he said. I'm equally impressed with the invention of a solar-powered hand-washing sink by Judose from Kumase and the COVID-19 prevention electronic bucket made by Kelvin Owusu Dapa and Richard Watting, both students of Obwase Senior High and Technical School. Necessity, indeed, is the mother of invention. So now I'm going to speak to Richard Quarting, who actually invented the solar-powered hand-washing bucket with Judo say, and do I have him? Hello, Richard. Hello, good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm doing great. And congratulations on the solar powered hand washing bow. Now, I've seen videos of it. Now, tell me, how is it moving? Are people getting it? Hello, hello, Jude, Richard. Sorry, are you there? Uh, yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Now, I can hear you. Congratulations on your solar powered hand washing barrel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> now, how are people embracing it? Oh, I, I feel so proud, and I'm happy it, people have come to accept. Yeah. So, are people purchasing it, or you're putting them advantage points? Uh, at the moment, we are going through the right processes with the documentation. Then we we'll come up with the uh, what is it? Uh, the production line. So we we planning to put them advantage places and corporate bodies too have shown interest. interest. Okay. Yeah. So that's Beautiful. what we're doing now. Beautiful. Now I want to ask you, how did you feel when you heard the president mention talk about the solar powered hand washing barrel? How did you feel? Uh, I felt I felt proud Ghanaian. Uh huh. Uh, because so many people in Ghana, and, yeah, oh, the president school see what you've done. Yes. yes. In his address at this crucial moment, then you should know that uh, you've gone far. Yeah. Mm, mm. And how has your fortunes changed so far since that mention during the, the speech? Hello? And I'm asking, after the speech, how have things changed? Uh, I, I don't move around. I used to move before when people have come to know me. Yeah. And meeting big, big people, I didn't even dream of. But I would say I give all thanks and credit to God. And also secondly to my team that supports me. Okay. Okay, Richard, it was wonderful talking to you. Now, like you said, you're putting them advantage points and and you, you said that corporate co companies have in, showed interest in it. And I want to ask you, do you have um, a way to do mass production? Are you, do you have a factory? Are you planning on building and making it bigger and a larger production? You get what I mean? Yeah, I'm happy uh, this has been accepted not only in Ghana, but worldwide. We're getting calls as far from Canada, South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria. So this is going to create a massive employment, I say. So we're trying to bring more people on board so we can produce largely, not only for Ghana, for, but beyond. Mm, I see. But do you have any plans to, you know, open a factory, create more of these things? Do you have other inventions also on board that you want to bring to the fore? Yeah, those people that know me already, yes. I already own a shoe factory. Uh -huh. I employ about 30 people. Wow, that's So I'm, I'm the kind that love to do things that will benefit with the map. So we've, we've even started putting up the structure for this factory for this. Uh, now the corporate bodies are coming and more people are showing interest. We've not 
employ no, not even less than 100 people at a go. Okay, sure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard. Congratulations on this beautiful invention. Eh? Enjoy yourself. God bless you. And now we'll take a quick break. When I return, Corby joins me with Tech Talk. And welcome back from the break. You're still watching Joy News Interactive on Joy News, your credible news source. My name is Najeli Doku, and today we're going to do Tech Talk. And WhatsApp has limited the forwarding of messages to counter COVID-19 misinformation. Details are here now. And I'm going to join Kobe, who's going to give us more information on that. Hello, Kobe. Hi. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you doing? Is that your lockdown facility? <laughs> I'm loving it. Now, let's talk about the thank you, WhatsApp thank you. and, you know, um, the limitation with forwarding of messages to counter the COVID-19 misinformation, because this thing has been happening for a while now. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so what happened was that uh, WhatsApp has been battling with forwarding of messages, uh, especially all these fake news messages. And they had an issue in India where it resulted in people lynching people and about 12 deaths occurred from that. So they decided to... ...messages to about 250 people. Mm -hmm. Now it has been reduced so about to about five, mm -hmm. and now it's even gotten down to now you can only forward messages to like one group at a time. See, so now the messages can be done in such a way that you won't be, you won't be able to forward all that unnecessary. Are they looking through the messages that are coming? Is that what is preventing this? They have access to the information that we're sending now. Unfortunately, they can't. Unfortunately, they can't look at our messages because they are encrypted with end-to-end -end encryption. Mm -hmm. So when you send a message, until it gets to the destination of where you're sending the message, they can't actually um, intercept the message and see what is inside the message. Okay. So now, does that affect every other message you but want to they forward? Can tell that, uh, does that affect every other message you want to send to different Sorry? groups? Does that, that partic this particular limitation, is it going to affect uh, any other messaging that you want to send, you know, broadcast? No, it doesn't. It, it, yes, actually, it affects all messages. You can't forward all messages more than a certain amount of time. You know, now they've even introduced where when you're forwarding messages, it actually tells that a message has forwarded. Yes. With the forwarded icon mm -hmm. on top. Yeah. And yes, that's because you can't they can't tell what message that is being forwarded. So in in order to prevent people from sharing fake, they're just making it more difficult for you to forward. Now if they make it more difficult, it dissuades they're hoping that it dissuades. It would dissuade. And that that's a very good one. <laughs> And unfortunately, we lost Spikey there, but that's very good information. Now, we need to know what information is wrong, what is fake, and what is right. Now, before we go, let's show you what others are doing in India, Italy, and Belgium. Robots are being used to assist doctors during this pandemic. It's all about social distancing. Doctors and nurses in Italy need all the help they can get, including from Tommy, the robot. Using my abilities, medical staff can be in touch with the patients without direct contact. Robots like Tommy operate in the most infectious wards. Staff here hope he'll reduce the risks of catching the disease by avoiding direct contact with patients. It allows us to use less protective clothing like masks and overalls, which at this time are in scarce supply. The advantage is therefore double. 
the northern region of Lombardy accounts for most of Italy's known coronavirus cases. Here, the robots help relay vital information between patients and doctors remotely and at any time of the day. This robot helps us monitor some clinical parameters of the patient, for example, heart rate, respiratory rate, oxygen saturation, blood pressure, and also mechanical aspects of respiration. In Giel, in Belgium, hospitals are testing whether robots equipped with ultraviolet lights can disinfect wards to keep patients safe, even in hard-to-reach areas. Please leave the room, close the door, and start a disinfection. The machine's ultraviolet light quickly kills bacteria. We want to make sure that we touch every surface by the light, and this can be done by the robot as it drives itself through the room that is treated. In India's southern state of Tamil Nadu, robots are lending a helping hand by delivering vital supplies. The robotic equipment is also available uh, for uh, uh, giving uh, food and medicine to the patients. So it's a very good initiative, highly appreciable. Others are on security patrol in Tunisia's capital. <laughs> this one, dubbed Robocop, is guarding empty streets, ensuring no one breaks the lockdown imposed last month. <laughs> Spotting unmanned drones is slowly becoming a regular occurrence. Many are being deployed as part of coronavirus awareness campaigns. As well as making sure that everyone stays indoors and maintains social distancing. While the human touch remains essential in times of crisis, robots are stepping in where people can't. And that's all we have for you on today on Joy News Interactive. Keep keeping up with the precautionary measures. Keep washing your hands under running water and practice social distancing. My name is Ajeli Doku. For more information, log on to myjoyonline.com and keep stay tuned and watch more of our programming right here on Joy News. Have a wonderful day.